Brothers and sisters, most uh, biblical scholars claim that uh, Mark wrote his gospel for the Gentiles. Proof is that it is the shortest of uh, the four gospels and uh, the simplest of all. But some scholars would also say Mark wrote his gospel for the persecuted Christians. It was written during the era when Emperor Nero entertained the citizens of Rome by the humiliation and the cruel death, mostly, of the followers of Jesus. The Christians lived in constant fear of being thrown to the wild beasts. And uh, when Mark opens his account of the story of Jesus, he tells how Jesus is with the wild beasts in the wilderness. Jesus is the innocent one, but his innocence does not protect him from conflict, from trial, from suffering, from facing the adversary. Innocence does not dispel conflict. Rather, it attracts it. And before the beginning of his ministry, Jesus is seen to face the trial in the wilderness, the traditional arena of Satan. And before going to public, the resolve of the innocent one is put to the test. And Mark says that Jesus was tempted by Satan. Let us recall that when Jesus comes to be baptized, his heavenly Father declares him to be his beloved son. Now, in the wasteland, the Son of God meets the adversary of God. The Son must decide whether to follow the way of the Father or the way of Satan. His new beginning is a time of chains and a time of temptation, but it is also a time of clarification. You see, it always helps to know who and what you are against, and who better than your enemy to help you clarify what you must oppose and what you must defend. And Jesus has to think God's way, thus becoming his father's spokesman. When he begins preaching, he tells the people that the time has come to let God rule in their lives. If this is to happen, then one must repent and believe in the good news. And the good news, my brothers and sisters, is not only the message of Jesus, but Jesus himself. Few of us associate the time of Lenten discipline with good news, particularly if that means facing 
the adversary within and around us. At the beginning of Lent, the church always takes us into the wilderness with Jesus to face the power that is opposed to the gospel. And the good news is that we do this with Jesus and in the company of his followers. None of us should have to face the wilderness alone. None of us should be thrown back on our own resources. We are all tempted. We all fail. We all sin. And sometimes we even wonder if there is an exit from the wilderness. All of us need to hear, like Jesus, the voice of the Father that recognizes us as his beloved children. And when we hear that voice, the call to repent is the call to stay in the company of the one who loves us. The gospel challenges us to change our minds about the way we think, change our hearts about the gospel we often ignore, and change our ways about uh, habits of sin. And uh, this is a lifetime's task. Jesus did not overcome Satan in the wilderness. He achieved that only until his death. This season of Lent will remind us of our need to start, to begin again, facing the enemy within us. And the good news is when we do that, we take the road that leads us to the kingdom.